everybody, Jamie Pate here, and welcome to this studio tour video. Super happy to have you all here today joining me. Let's just walk right in here to this little space. And it is little at only about 11 feet by 11 feet, maybe that, if that. So here's just a little 360 view of everything. All right, so let's start here, right behind my door. We're just gonna move around the room from left to right. And this bookcase is a holder of many things. Here at the top, I have my sewing machine. And this is kind of a tall bookcase, if you will, for keeping a sewing machine, but I actually like to be able to stand. And so I'm a stand-up scrapper, so that works perfectly. Above that space is where I, it's kind of sort of like a inspiration board. And so right now I have my stamp journal that's up there from our challenge in July and August with Heidi Swap, And then just some kind of other current makes that haven't really found a home. And you can see here I have some recent haunting that is now in the house and has just launched from Heidi Swap. And so I'm just kind of popping it up there for right now, but it'll come down as the seasons change. On the main shelf there, you're going to see my storyline chapters as well as storyteller albums. Here is being held everything from 2020 family chapters. I call my weekly, kind of the, what I replaced Project Life with. I call them now family chapters. So I have everything from 2020 to current, including memory planner from 2020 as well, all the way to current. And a one year has two books, just got pretty thick. So that I love this and I'm probably gonna have to move some of my storage around, which I'll show you next as this collection of albums continues to grow. On the next shelf are storage boxes. One of them has some journals. You're going to hear me repeat that several times. There's a lot of journals going on in the studio. I, I'm not even apologizing. I just have a thing for journals. I really do. And then the other box is empty. And I will show you another empty storage holder later on. Uh, there's just a weird thing in me that just likes to have some of the space not filled. So there you go for whatever it's worth. On the bottom shelf, I have a small collection of December albums. This is not all my December albums. I believe I only have from 2020 in here. And then also the nine by 12 album is a October daily that I started last year. And I'm gonna pick that up here pretty soon because I really do enjoy doing those daily type pages. In this basket here, this is an open basket on purpose because in here you're gonna find current memory planner paraphernalia, if you will. I have in here pouches, probably a, for sure the current pouch is in here of the Stop the Blur kit, then the previous one. Sometimes I even have three in here that I'm working on at one time. Then the this is a current memory planner book that I'm working in. I have my last book still in here because sometimes they're not finished yet and I'm still just referring to them. Then you can see there is a mess of tags in here because I will make tags and very often I will just toss them in here to find, they're part of my kits, if you will, to find homes inside my pages. Now next to that bookcase, but can be found anywhere in the studio at any time, is this We Are Makers project cart. And it is always laden with projects. It doesn't seem like I can, I can ever get through anything, but that's okay. I love these. I love the fact that you can just pick up the trays, bring them to your workspace and work on a project, set it right back on the tray and set it aside. It has really been a most awesome element in this room. All right, let's check out what's in the closet because the closet holds a, to me, what I think is a ton of things. This top shelf you can see here is a file holder and it holds distress papers or heavy cardstock, collage papers, things I'm not using all the time, but I do want them orderly and ready to go. Very often do we have a memory deck just kind of hanging out here in the studio because I just love putting cards on there. What I really love to do is just kind of go through here and find a card that kind of speaks to me like this. Enjoy the now. 
Okay, this next section is just a space where I hold some of my storage envelopes that aren't being used. This box here holds slimline envelopes, just kind of not really anything that has a real serious home, but this is a big home in here. And here is all my color collective from Heidi Swap Shop and just fits in this Ikea box. This is an older box. It's been around for a while. Actually fits inside another drawer holder, but it fits those perfectly. But something else I want you to see are these baskets here. They are also stop the blur kits. I have a little bit more than a year's worth in here and then I will go through and purge some of that but for right now I like having those. I do refer to them all the time and then here you can see a basket of trim. I do not have the color collective in here and I don't actually really have a lot of trim but it's just easy and I like baskets in containers like in holders like this. These are just some craft crates from Michaels and I painted them a long time ago but I like to put baskets in there because I can just pull them out like drawers. And speaking of drawers, this is a drawer that I picked up from Michaels many years ago. I actually have two of them in here and it holds a variety of things. This top drawer here is archival inks and some back stock of some distress inks. Then I call this my hardware drawer because it's what's in there. It's basically hardware, but I also have like sequins and some uh, veneers, but mostly staple and um, back stock of staples and out eyelets as well as brads and a paper clip, as well as book rings. And there's just a variety of things in here, just kind of anything that's metal. But like I said, I also have my sequins in there as well. They will go in this drawer. The next drawer will hold a lot of my distress mediums, um, cl uh, cloud whip, as well as the back stock of ink blenders and ink blending replacement tips. The other drawer is full of a collection that's a big hot mess right now, and the bottom drawer is actually empty. This is actually a really oversized, uh, it's metal. It makes me think of a locker basket, but that's completely not what this is. I probably found it at a vintage store and I know it was years ago. And so this, for the most part, hold my 12 by 12 collections. This first part is all 49 and market. And then sometimes I'll have the 13 by 13 storage envelopes that will hold a collection as well. I actually cut the top off of this one, which just makes it super easy to get into. This also includes some miscellaneous 12 by 12 pattern paper that I have as well as collections from Heidi Swap that are all back here. These will end up on a project tray, like I showed you that project card earlier. If I'm working on a, on a particular uh, layout or tag or card or whatever, but otherwise I try, to, I try to be really good about storing my collections in here. Now some older collections will be found in these 12 by 12 boxes. These are a Joanne find in their storage section in their scrapbook department. I'm not sure if they're still available. That black box on the bottom is an Ikea box. I actually utilize those quite a bit in my home everywhere. They're just great size boxes. And that one holds currently um, some older mini albums. Now this was a bedroom. So these are just traditional closet doors that are found in here. I don't love having the sliding doors, but I also know I don't want this area open. And you can probably get an idea. This particular part of the closet is full of things. So we have here on the very top, these are dies. Um, these are the slimline dies as well as oversized dies. I have another section for die storage as well that I'll share with you. I have um, scrapbook.com stickers and rub-ons and larger st stamp sets in the back. These are all stamp sets from scrapbook.com for the most part. They're bigger than the four by six. I keep my four by sixes someplace else. These are containers I found at TJ Maxx. So if you're ever looking, I would just suggest always look at TJ Maxx. Even if you're not looking for something in particular, you will always find something. This is a tall storage craft room. It's kind of dark in here, so sorry about that. Um, this is a tall storage craft room solution piece from scrapbook.com and on it are all, uh, inside of it rather, are all my stencils and they just fit in there perfectly and I mostly have them categorized by what type stencil they are. I have a tower over there that holds inkers, back stock of stains, stickles and embossing powder and paint and a lot of just regular craft room type items. My um, brayers are in here and backstock of 
I don't know why. I don't know why I have my hat glues in there, but I think they're kind of cute. And a bunch of embossing here on top. And then just, I just put uh, nails in the wall, hung these clipboards, and there's just stuff on them. Just some old Heidi Swap here. Some old um, stencils are here. And that's all that is. Now looking at the top here is basically a back stock of containers. There is some ephemera in there. There are the, I don't think the scrapbook.com carries them anymore, but they are the 12 by 12, like the magazine holders. I have a class that I taught last year is in there. Plus all my chipboard is in another one and then an extra album that I have right now. Down here, I have more of the stadium craft room storage holders from scrapbook.com that holds Tim Holtz here in this first one. And then you can see when I just go through and just kind of grab and go, cause it's not always that terribly neat. Heidi Swap with alphas and tags and washi and additional stamps. There are alpha stamps that are way back here that I keep in that, cause it fits the six by eight stamps beautifully. All these large alphas and some other labels are back here. And then in these storage organizers, it's one, two, three sections here, but they fit the four by six perfectly. So this is all Heidi Swamp. That's all scrapbook.com. And it's just a great way I can just pull these out, which is what I love about, what I love about everything in here. I just pull these out, bring them to my work table. And that's just kind of how I work. Down here, I have a large stadium holder with more tags, scrap, I'm sorry, stop the blur, stamps, sticker books, whatever. And then there's some new storage containers from scrapbook.com that I'm slowly filling in. This top one here holds color collective ribbons. I love having them all in one place. I wasn't doing Doing that and then I'm gonna put my watercolors in here and probably probably use that storage because I don't have great space for my art journaling which is kind of a hobby for me so I'm going to probably utilize that for more art journal type items I have an extra big shot down here I have more stamp storage I have more stencils and just kind of um, an array of trimmers that are down below. Next is this wall of shelves. There's three shelves that are attached to the wall. Then I just have some things that I enjoy having out. You can see that there is washi in a big glass jar. You can see my peace fingers. I get asked about those a lot. I believe I got those from Joanne years ago. No, I take that back, Hobby Lobby. I have those yogurt jars that hold some Tim Holtz chipboard quotes. And over here, I just have a bunch of clips, paper clips, book clips, little clips. I like clips. So those are just easy for me to grab, which I actually do pretty often. I have here stored the new Heidi Swap twine and metal or metallic thread, I guess we should call that. I have another memory decks hanging out there and this five tier storage container from scrapbook.com holds a plethora of pops of color. Then I have an ink storage tower with some distress and I have some other pops of color and some paint and just some other storage pieces that I like to have out. Now it's interesting because as I'm going through this, I'm realizing, boy, I kind of grab things in storage containers from different places. And I do as the scrap room has evolved through the years, just to have different needs and different things that need different places. So, this here is a kind of a tiered 10 storage that has mini albums and projects and stickers and postcards. Stampers Anonymous is found in this basket along with another 10 of some stamp pads that's holding some projects to be worked on. Then here I have a 12 by 12, I think this is We Are Memory Keepers or we are makers now if they're called. And I don't really utilize this one that much. I have my foundations paper sitting there at the bottom. I need to move that to where I now home have home for cardstock and another place in here. This is a six by eight holder of journals. And then this tin here, it just holds samples that I've made and I just like to have them out on display. The bottom shelf is home to my big shot switch Along with this basket, yet another vintage, vintage find, but I use the larger size storage envelopes from scrapbook.com to hold projects I still need to work on. These are albums, probably storyline chapters or storytellers. The photos are in there, stories are in there. I just need to put them together. Now this is a Kallax bookcase 
from Ikea. Uh, these are one of my most favorite bookcases. I love these and they, this one actually is pretty under control right now. This thing can be so full of product, but I have, I am very determined to call my work as, or my product, my tools, my collections, whatever, just as much as I can. Um, I don't do it all the time. I'd probably say I do it once. That's not true. I shouldn't say I do it as much as I can. I do it about once a season. So in here, you're going to see these craft room boxes from scrapbook.com. They perfectly fit these four by seven, five square envelopes. And in here is where I will store my dies. I will trim down the packaging from the die package. And very often this one doesn't, um, but very often I'll have two sets of something inside one of these. And then I have some um, kind of misshaped. They're not really misshaped. They just don't fit inside these, these um, particular storage envelopes. So they go in the back. I actually have just cleared this one out because I moved all my Tim Holtz to another one. So this one's currently empty. And you know what? We're probably just going to fill that up. This next cube holds a medium storage envelopes and I have mostly alphas in here. I am slowly working on getting them on mag magnets to hold them in place, but this mostly holds my alphas as well as my numbers. Uh, I'm trying to find the number here. Here we go. And then the back of it is a couple of I was originally organizing these in the smaller square envelopes, but then I have oversized Tim Holtz dies in the back of this. This next medium's envelope storage is a big mishmash because I just have like current collections in here. I store them also in the medium envelopes. This is ephemera and I have labels in here. I have Tim Holtz ephemera in here. I have, um, this is Bow Bunny currently. I have some taller items in the back. I do have a couple of paper pads. I had recently reworked my paper pads and I will show you how I'm organizing those now. This is a 12 by 12 paper storage from scrapbook.com as well. And I mostly have cardstock, white and cream and pinks and black that sit in here. And I'm working on just making this a, a cardstock home. And then I have a couple of pattern papers here that I keep pulling from. Then here at the bottom, this is an older storage container from scrapbook.com. It has all of my Tim Holtz as well as I just have a couple of things that I've just kind of tossed in here. There are these boxes again that I was telling you about from Ikea. This one holds all my adhesive backstock. This one here holds all of the different sizes that I have for my die cutting machines. For the big Sizzix, the big shot, the P6. I know it sounds a little ambitious, doesn't it? But it's just it's just what it this is. This is another letter holder and I have everything from white sticker paper, vellum pieces, acetate, clear paper, vellum sticker paper, as well as some laminate sheets as well. And then I think I have some more labels back there. And then I have another box with some more of my cutting plates because on the top of this, the other reason I really love this bookshelf, but I love this for a countertop. So my die cutting machine is always out, which is why my cutting plates are nearby. I have my mink machine there. I literally just, this was a plate for my grandma and I just keep it close. And I literally just throw these ink blending tools on them as I'm working. And then here is another medium envelope storage box and it holds like current Heidi swap, if that makes sense, like things I'm pulling from right now. So these are four by six stamps that sit in there. And here's a pouch, one of the new pouches from scrapbook.com. It has a project inside of it. Then I've used more medium storage. These hold everything from dies to scrap papers to um, just whatever little things I don't want to get lost. Then I have the six by eight stamps here in the back. And this is not the whole collection, but like I said, I like having right here at my work desk, cause here's where all the magic happens. I like having those guys right there. And then we have another bookshelf situation or shelving situation up on the wall. And this holds everything from, I have a little glue station here. So I have all my tips. 
And then I have a journal here. I keep some more Tim Holtz quotes in this cute little bowl. Love collecting bowls. Um, you've seen me talk about these bowls here with um, die cutting situation where I'll just have things die cut and I'll store them in here. Um, my t these are the stack and stow, which is kind of the same idea. I'm cutting things up or I'm utilizing things and I'll just toss them in there. And they're right here by my workspace for whenever I need them. My typewriter's here. Over here on this shelf, I have a basket of washi tape then I have a basket of scrap papers so if I am working on a project and I need a little piece of cardstock it's more than likely in there then I have more Tim Holtz storage I have pens and erasers and stamps in there more memory decks cards my girl that I love so much I keep my adhesives up here the roller adhesives I have to have a plant and here's another one of those drawers that I was telling you about earlier from Ikea and I have journals in there so this is my workspace it's an Ikea table and I actually have a second table right on top of it because it gives me about like another inch and a half of height I am 5'10", so I just like to have workspaces at a good level. I have the Distress Oxides that I use most often are here in Tim Holtz containers. This is a little thing I'm going to show you at another time. I have this new silicone holder with these brushes because I'm using these brush, these ink blending brushes all the time. I really love those. I almost always keep the scrapbook.com workspace mat on my workspace and I have the new Sizzix trimmer here sitting right next to it. Now this is a cart from Ikea and I am just, I have to tout the praises of this because you can see I do not have any drawers by this table. It's completely open. So all of my tools, these are my tools that I am always grabbing for. And plus I can kind of use my, rather move my cart around if I need it someplace else. But this is that heat tool organizer from scrapbook.com. So I have my hot glue gun and it's almost always plugged in when I'm working. I've just kind of thrown some spray bottles in there. I'm always using a spray bottle of water as well as alcohol. And then all my scissors and rulers fit in here. And I always have the mini attacher and this hole punch is always here as well. I have, I love using these yogurt cups. Can you see that there? And these are just great little holders of things. So I have um, glue and I have glue pens and I have like all, this is like the place, this is like, if I didn't have this right here, I could not craft. I have the punch, paper punches that I use most often. You can see I have also included here, sandpaper and mint tape. Down here, I have, I treat this as a drawer and I have my adhesives in here. I love having that. I have a few more paper punches in this other container here. Down below are cleaning rags as well as double-sided foam adhesives. Now this is a real small gorilla rack and I just recently picked this up. I wanted a space for a couple of things in particular. I have scrapbook.com six by eight papers in this tall storage container but i also have the a2s that um, are now growing and they are in these smaller wood containers that i picked up from ikea there's the medium stadium and i have all of my stamping blocks my mini guillotine some dies back here that i use all the time and a whole empty space i i get really weird about him i just have to have an empty space someplace I don't know why. I have printer paper, white card stock that I'm always using, and vellum and some specialty paper in that eight and a half by 11 paper stack. And then this is some art paper that I've recently picked up and it's now sitting there as well. And down below, I have some office supplies in the craft box. And in this metal container, I have all my Christmas things. I like to keep them all in one place. And so that will kind of find, don't you love all those wires? This is, I hide these wires. <laughs> I am not a fan of wires. So all my Christmas is down there. This printer here is the IP8720 Canon. It's a large format. It will print up to 12 by 12. I hardly ever use that feature whatsoever. I do like this 
a lot. Had a little bit of trouble with the drivers lately, so I'm kind of in a little bit of space of trying to refigure some things. And then um, my computer's here. This is this is my desk. This is what my desk looks like. This is where I do the editing, where I do posting, where I do planning, all those things. Friends, that's a look at my studio. Wow, I feel like I covered a lot. I hope I covered enough. If you have any questions, I do hope that you will drop them in the description. If there's something that wasn't clear, because so often when I do these videos, something's super clear to me and I realize no one else might know what I just was talking about. I would love to invite you to ask the questions. I'd be happy to take any questions from you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.